Hey friends, thank you for being here the, today. You picked an awesome week to come here because we're in a, our second week of a series called Everything Everywhere. We've been talking about how we can look for God when we're overwhelmed with stress and worry. Sounds good, right? Today we're gonna talk about something that's both exciting and sometimes stressful, the future. Even if we don't consciously realize it, we spend a lot of time thinking about the future. We wonder what we're going to do tomorrow, what we should do after we graduate, and where we will first teleport when that becomes an option. As children, thinking about the future felt fun and exciting, but now, well, it can feel like a lot. Thinking about the future can stress us out. For the most part, it's unknown. None of us exactly know when, what the future will bring us. It can definitely feel like everything, everywhere. We feel some stress over our immediate future. Our minds worry about things like, what are our parents gonna say about the grade we just got on our science test? or if our team is gonna win that next game. But there are also bigger, more long-term stresses to worry about. For some of you, you feel stressed about things that you want to change in your life. You have things you hope will be different than they are now. Whatever those things are, you are nervous about the future because you're worried it won't bring the change you want to see. For others of you, it's the exact opposite. Maybe you stress about what the future has to do with the fact that you don't want things to change, when you worry about the future, you're worrying by the reality that things won't always be the way they are now. Wherever your stress comes from, there's one thing that's true from all, for all of us. We can't control the future. Sure, we can make choices and decisions that impact our future in a positive way, and we should. But there are things that are going to happen in our future, both good and bad, that we have absolutely no control over. We can't predict them, we can't prepare for them, and we can't possibly control or even know how it's all going to turn out. So what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to face a future that we have no control over? And how are we supposed to manage that stress in the present when we have no idea what the future will look like? There's an incredible experience recorded in the Bible that can help us answer this question. A couple of guys in the situation where they had zero control over what, they, over what was going to happen next I think we can learn a lot by them by hearing the way they handled the stress, brought on by an uncertain future. The two guys I'm talking about are Paul and Silas. These two had placed their faith in Jesus, who dedicated their lives traveling from city to city, telling the good news about him. Their journey is recorded in the New Testament in a book called Acts. During their ministry, Paul and Silas eventually made their way to a city called Philippi, which is now the country we now know as Greece. While there, Paul and Silas met a slave girl who was making money from, for her owners by telling fortunes. Her ability wasn't from God, so Paul and Silas prayed in Jesus' name to set her free. The people who were depending on the girl to make money were so mad they had Paul and Silas arrested, beaten, and thrown into prison. Now this wasn't any old prison. The jailer put Paul and Silas in the innermost cell with their feet chained. They even had a guard assigned to them at all times to make sure they didn't try to escape. It was definitely an everything, everywhere kind of experience. In that super stressful situation, what did Paul and Silas do? Let's read about it in the book of Acts. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. Listen, even if you are not sure about all this God stuff, I think all of us would be sending some desperate prayers in that situation. We'd be asking God to get, out, to get us out of that mess. I'm pretty sure we've all prayed a for a few prayers like that in stressful situations. But Paul and Silas were praying different prayers, prayers that seemed unusual considering their circumstances. These prayers were full of hope. Check it out. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. These guys were full on singing while they were in prison. They were chained up, beaten, and their future looked anything but bright. Their future was absolutely uncertain. But in the middle of that uncertainty, they chose joy. In that super stressful moment, they had turned their attention towards prayer and praise. In the middle of the dark prison, Paul and Silas teach us, when everything is everywhere, joy is always a choice. Paul and Silas had little control over their current circumstances and even less control over their futures, but they had complete control over their attitudes. Instead of choosing stress and fear and, and hopelessness, they chose joy. They chose to turn to God, who they trusted with their present and their future. If this were the end of the story, it would be amazing enough. But right in the middle, 
of Paul and Silas's road trip, something crazy happened. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All of the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Great news for the prisoners, bad news for the guard, who was now worried about his own future. If all the prisoners escaped, he would certainly be put to death. He was so worried about what might happen to him that he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, Stop! Don't kill yourself! We are all here! The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what, I, what must I do to be saved? Wait, what? The guard who was watching over Paul and Silas in the prison suddenly felt completely different. He was so amazed by the way Paul and Silas had responded to their uncertain futures that the guard put his faith in Jesus right then and there. And that's the other lesson we learn from Paul and Silas. When you choose joy, you never know how it may affect and inspire others. I know this doesn't magically take away the stress we all feel about the future, but I do think it can help us navigate the stress we feel in any uncertain circumstances. It can help us remember that every day, joy is always a choice. How can you choose joy when you are feeling stressed? Well, here's where you can start. First, identify what you're worried about. When I say choose joy, I don't mean put on a pretend smile and fake that you're fine when you're not. That doesn't help any of it. It's important to identify what it, what it is that you're worried about. Be honest about what's stressing you out. Identify it yourself to someone you trust and God. Then remember what God can do. Paul and Silas had experienced God's faithfulness, goodness, and love many times up to this point. So when their backs were literally against the wall, they weren't left wondering if God would provide or if God cared or how much God m would be faithful to them. Instead, they could remember that the ways they'd seen God show up in the past and have hope that God might do the same in the future. That's what you can do too. When you're worried about what's ahead or stressed about the unknown, look back. Remember how God has been faithful to you in the past and help you choose joy, both today and in the future. Finally, be grateful for the things to be thankful for, even in the middle of your stress and worry. Big or small, the more things you can think of to be thankful for now, the more joy you'll see show up as a result. When everything is everywhere, joy is always a choice. So I hope you will try choosing joy in your stress and unknowns this week, because it will not only make a difference in your life, you may not know who's who's, who else's life you may impact for the better. Think back to Paul and Silas. Do you remember what they did when they were in a really difficult situation? They chose to worship and pray. That is a practical way we can all choose to express joy. So let's follow their example and pray. Dear God, thank you for always having a plan for us, even when we might not have one ourselves. We always know you'll guide us on the right path. You are the light that guides us through the dark. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Amen.